question here, <laughs> which is uh, uh, from Elizabeth Threatwin, which says, what does it mean in physics when it says we are in no time? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Can we bring her on or because I need a little more. It, yeah. it depends. Marshall, who it was? You said it so fast. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Trutwin. Okay, let's bring Elizabeth on here. Let's see, because it depends in which context. Um, it could be. Um, hello, Elizabeth. Nice to meet you. You too. Thank Where you. are you at? Virginia. Virginia. Right on. Nice to meet you. You too. Thank you. So speaking of no time, I'm thinking of, um, you, you always talk about space memory. And if there's no memory, there's no time. Oh, right. I'm always thinking of things in terms of extraterrestrial phenomena. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's, that's good. Where coming from with no time. Right. Well, so yeah, you can imagine that uh, without memory, there's no time because the concept of time demands that you know what happened before so that you have some linear vector of time, right? So uh, if there's time in the universe, then there's memory in the universe. And what I'm saying is that memory is what we were discussing. It it's that not non-local information inside the volume of the protons, um, or inside the volume of any uh, singularity. But but that this information grid is like in the Planck field is everywhere. So so when you're moving through the Planck field. Each moment is shared across the non-local network. So each moment is really like each present is actually outside of time. It's not, you know, it, it's instantaneous across the whole network. So it's no time, right? Um, and, and so, but, but this is how each coordinates in space time receives the, the next bit of information. So it's constantly changing, right? Because. Or it, it, okay. Um, <laughs> it's, it, we just got given the time. Um, <laughs> um, so. But um, so in each present, um, all times are available because it's shared across the network. Mm -hmm. and, so, um, and, and so in that sense, it's no time. The present is, is no time, right? And but but most importantly, the concept of time becomes secondary to memory. So space time should be called space memory, right? Because it's memory in the structure of space that makes it possible to have time. I'm hearing that this is related to the feedback loop. First you're in the frame, then you're back in the universe, then back in the frame and back in. Mm -hmm. And when at a certain moment, there's no time in the, maybe in those frames. Right. So you can imagine if you're trying to cross the universe, um, you want to get inside the network, transfer the information non-locally to the other place where you want to go. And then, you know, reconstruct the information over there. Right? So, yeah. uh, 
you can so you would have to get inside some kind of volume like you would have to cross a boundary an event horizon to get to singularity so you could pop out across some other boundary on the other side of the galaxy or on the on, in another galaxy or but you would go you would go literally fractally through your protons through you know the center of your planet to the center of the sun of your solar system to the center of the galaxy out the arm to another star you know like you're literally going through the information network but it's instantaneous it, through the volume that connects all the black holes the whole thing is entangled so uh in that sense you know time becomes irrelevant because you're really arriving on the other side at the same time that you left on this side but the other side relative to where you were is way past in time right is way like because if you're on this planet you're looking at the the photons that are arriving in your eye from that planet or that star system they've traveled you know for thousands of years millions of years billions of years to get to your eye so what you're seeing is the past of that event but if you get into the network then you arrive at the present of that event <laughs> <laughs> so um so if you, a little mind boggling so if the only information you have is the, the what's relative past information you don't know what you can actually get when you get there you know <laughs> right like, because oh. it, it might not be there anymore it might not be there at that too yeah um but um so but that has another philosophical uh impact because it, i mean even with short distances shorter distances photons take time to get to your eyes electrical signals take time to get through your you know to your brain all this stuff so basically everything that's outside of you is in the past mm -hmm. right the only actual present is what you're experiencing at your singularity relationship to the rest of the universe from your center is present right what's outside of you is past So um so you can imagine that your past is actually all this information that you left in the structure of space as you traveled through it. And you can imagine that that information is still present in the structure of space in those coordinates. And that you you modify that information when you think about it when you change your opinion about something in your past when you change your emotional state relative to something in your past right and that changes forward to your present changes you in your present but then it changes your future as well right so the future is modified by the past and the past is modified by the future that has very exciting implications yeah especially for time travel and space travel and so on but thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. very good question yeah